All right, guys, Fula coming to you with another video. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and get into it. There's a couple of things that were brought to my attention. Um, and um, it's unfortunate that these things are occurring, you know, but this is the times we're living in. So this is what's happening, basically. Let's go into it. Later. I am That's so done. Sad. Like, why can't I find a fucking real man that want to be with me? Like, why? Why? What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? Why do you motherfuckers play too much? If y'all don't want a relationship, let me know. So, with her, it's a matter of like, okay, you're twerking, you're, you're twerking and doing these dances for men to see. So, you have to ask yourself, is a man going to take you serious? Like, is a man going to actually say, oh, well, this is girlfriend material? Or is a man going to say, oh, this is a jump off, you know? With those tattoos, is a man going to take you serious? Like, with all those tattoos, is a man going to be like, oh, well, yeah, I can bring her home to mom. You know, um... If I were to bring like a woman back to my village who is tattoo filled, just has tattoos everywhere, and you know, as they call them, they they call them tramp stamps. That that's what they say. Oh, um, yeah, it's my tramp stamp, right? If if I were to like. If I were to basically bring one of those people, one of those women home to my village, um, my parents, my my mom, my aunties, my uncles, my cousins, my grandma, and things like that, they would look at me very stupidly. They would be like, "Well, what is this fool doing? Like, does does this fool remember where he comes from?" Like, they would be like that. You know what I mean? They would be like, whoa. You know, we know he lived in the West, but that doesn't mean he has to become of the West. You know, so... With that being said, it it, it just wouldn't work, you know? Um, it just wouldn't work out. And the reason why it wouldn't work out is because of the simple fact that, you know, they know what I'm doing here and they know that like, okay, well, why would you bring someone with all that extra baggage? Now, one thing that needs to be said as well is that, um, Little did I know she has two kids, you know, uh, that woman who who did what she did. She, I, I believe she has two kids. So that's another thing. Like, no guy is going to want to invest in that, you know. No guy is going to want to, like, really, um, really basically... Um, put their time in to someone like that. Now, the next videos though, um, I'm telling you Muslim sisters as your brother, you guys are, you guys are, are, are skating on a slippery slope. And I'm just trying to advise you. I'm not trying to like chastise you or anything like that. I'm just simply trying to about of advise you because if you um do this feminism thing it's not going to work out in your favor i'm telling you right now 
you know, if you if you follow this route of feminism, you're going to end up regretting it. I'm letting you know, you know, I'm telling you, you're going to regret it. So you guys better wake up and, you know, I'm serious. Do what the women of the Prophet, alayhi salatu salam's time did. Because you're, you're really, climb, you're re as I say, you're really skating on a slippery slope. So a while ago, I was talking to this guy about possible marriage. Before I continue, men, please do not propose to me in the comments at a super... So so here's a Muslim sister talking about marriage and whatnot. And it's sad to say, it, you know, and this is coming from a Muslim brother, but she she already has like Ujub. She already has arrogance, like talking about men proposing to her in the comment section. And it's like, OK, well, you know, um, it's like, I mean, why why would you think you're. I mean, that's just being self-absorbed, you know. I mean, maybe it did happen that men were proposing to her in the comment section. Maybe, I don't know. But again, you can just see how the Western culture has influenced her so much by just her sense of like, just thinking that she's all that in a bag of salt. But let's continue on. Anyway, so I was telling him that I'm about to graduate with my bachelor's degree and I want to go to grad school for chemistry. And he says, well, why would you do that? You want to have kids, don't you? And I said, yeah, of course I want to have kids, you know, eventually. Okay, so there's not a problem in a, a Muslim woman getting an education or any woman for that matter getting an education. But unfortunately, what happens really is that the woman... Um, lest the education get the best of her and she has no time for family life and she really doesn't have time to even be a wife you know what I mean um, when when a woman says you know I got my I, I'm you know I don't need no man I can do it myself and things like that what she's essentially saying is that um, she she's better off alone, you know. She she only needs a man for um, as a matter of convenience, really, you know. And when we say that, it, that's basically saying that, you know, she wants to be able to do what she does. Meaning she wants to be able to, you know, um, do what men do, essentially. But then have a man cater to her very needs. Like, that's what she really wants. That's that's what she's into, mostly. Um, and, you know, it, it doesn't end well for her. Because men... Men don't need that, and men go where they they are wanted. You know, men will go where they are wanted. So that's why, like, even I had a friend um, just recently. He went to the DR. You know, he said he was done with Western women, and Muslim Western women better take heed and not fall into this trap. You know, because this is not going to end up good for them at all. <laughs> He said, then why would you waste your time at grad school? You have to stay home with them. And I was like, I'm going to work too. This man. So with that being said, it's like. It doesn't it doesn't work. Unless you have a family structure where the family is actively actively involved in raising up the kids because we have to assume that the guy is going to work too. So if she works and they have kids, then who's going to be raising the kids? You know, I'm sorry to say, but if you 
like have a nanny or something like that, it's not going to really work. Okay? It's not going to go well if you have a nanny or because in essence you're having a stranger raise your kids. You know? And I'm pretty sure they're not going to give a care about those kids as much as a parent would. And the thing is, is I think that if your intentions are pure, that it can be set up where the man will have enough money to provide for the kids and the wife without her having to work if your intentions are pure. You know, but with the woman working and the husband working, then yeah, who's gonna raise the kids? You know, like that's just the general question. And that kind of just shows that maybe the mother doesn't, that, that again, the Western woman does things out of convenience, more so than out of conviction said women can't work in Islam once they have kids that's against the religion like sir did you forget that Khadija the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him's first wife he said then why that's disgusting she had all of his kids and she worked that's disgusting so her argument is null and void because uh, Nailato alayhi salatu salam, when he, he, when, you know, she would, when he worked for Khadija, it was still in the dynamic of that Nailato alayhi salatu salam, he went out to do the work. Okay. Um, he went on the trade caravan. He went to go do the groundwork. She was just the one that really provided the merchandise uh, in regards to the thing. Um, Khadija, radiallahu an, she was the supplier in essence. But the thing is, she sent other people out to go do the work. You know what I mean? So when, when, when she says that she's like miss, she, she's miss, um, representing Khadija because it wasn't as if Khadija was out in the, um, going on trade caravans herself, you know, it was that she would send people and there would be men that she would send. And they will collect the profits. They will sell the merchandise. They will bring back the profits and then they will take their share of the profits. But it didn't mean that she was out there doing it, you know? So even, even when married to Nailadu alayhi salatu salam, he was still the one out there doing the work, okay? And she was still at home. Now, another thing that she got wrong is that um, the the uh, Nailato alayhi salatu salam, he didn't have all his kids with Khadija. Um, he had Fatima radiallahu on with Khadija. Uh, some of the kids that Nailato alayhi salatu salam had, they were deceased at birth. Um, there's a reason for that. Many people said that, you know, um, some scholars said that if he did have any surviving offspring besides Fatima, then, you know, there may be a chance that those offspring would, um, you know, be, you know, have Nabuat. And so the reason why, you know, Allah decided to call them back early is so that he can fulfill the prophecy of their, of Nailato alayhi salatu salam being the last messenger, you know. 
So th this woman, I would say she needs to um, fear a lot and get out of this feminism crap, you know, and, and that's for a lot of Muslim women, a lot of Western Muslim women, you know, they can keep on keeping on with this feminism stuff and what Muslim men are going to do, especially Muslim men who are from different places, especially m like myself, we're going to go back home and we're just going to go deal with that. We're going to go get a, a bride from there. You know, um, I know many Muslims who did that. I know two Sudanese brothers. One of them was my teacher in fiqh. He did not marry a Western woman. He came and got his wife um, and married her in Sudan. And he did that. And then another one married his wife in Sudan. He did that. And guess what? His their wives stay at home. You know, they have no problem in staying at home handling business. The only time that they're not at home is if they go back to Sudan to visit their family, which has been done before. I noticed that a lot, a lot of the, you know, traditional uh, Sudanese women, they have no problem staying at home doing their jobs as a wife. But if you get like this kind of Muslim woman, then yeah, you're going to be in for it and you'll probably get a divorce too, knowing her, seeing how combative she is. But yeah, you Muslim sisters, you better take heed and not fall down this trap of the Western woman. I'm telling you right now, it's not going to end good for you. But anyhow, fool is signing out. Leave your thoughts, leave your comments. And Jod Amr.